Hello everyone, The Rookie Woodworker here, and today we're going to be talking about this cutting board. I know, it's another cutting board video. I've done quite a few cutting board videos now, and I promise you the next couple months I'm going to relax on the cutting board videos and we'll get into some different projects. But if you like cutting board videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Finish watching this video, and and then go back to my channel and watch some other cutting board videos. I have some really neat stuff there, some really neat cutting boards that that's well within any rookie woodworker's ability to make and have fun with it but for now i'm excited to get into this one because this one here turned out really well and and the project is easier than even i expected it to be um so yeah let's get to it all right to start this project off i'm going to start milling down some sapili sapili is what i went with because i believe that's a pretty good color for uh, bricks now the size bricks I'm going to make is about an inch and a half by three and a half inches wide. Um, I do not have any uh, any sapili that's more than four or five quarters, so I'm going to have to laminate some of it together to get the thickness of an inch and a half. So if you're trying to match my dimensions with your own build, and you have sapili that's upwards of two inches thick, uh, you can go ahead and skip this whole first glue up because it's a little bit of a waste of time for you. But I thought I would include it anyway just in case you didn't and to explain why the grain pattern is the way it is in my finished product. But to get two pieces to come together and make an inch and a half, you'll need three quarters of an inch uh, on one side and three quarters of an inch on the other side, but I'm not going to go all the way down to three quarters of an inch I'm going to make it a little bit thicker and then I'm going to laminate them together because I'm going to have to run it through a planer eventually But for the glue up I'm gluing them together in a way that the grains will work against each other to be kind of like a mirror opposites of each other by gluing it together with the grains working against each other instead of with each other, it reduces the risk of your board crowning or cupping as the weather changes or the moisture content changes. Whenever they, they work against each other, they kind of keep each other at bay and, and keep each other straight, basically by acting as each other's counterweights. But it's important to be careful not to glue them all together. We're gluing them in pairs here. After they dry, we'll mill them down, but before we do that, let's uh, double check our equipment, make sure the fence is square, and make sure both sides of the tables agree with each other. That way everything turns out to be perfect, especially since these pieces are so big, a little bit of uh, being off can end up uh, throwing your board way out of whack. So I'm going to get one perfectly straight edge, and I'm going to check it and make sure it's perfectly square. And then we'll uh, go to the thickness planer, and then that's where we're going to lock in our perfect width of three and a half inches. And the short piece is going to be an inch and three quarters. At this point, we don't have our thickness down to its final thickness yet because whenever we glue the grout in between these pieces, we're going to have to plane that down again, and then that's where we'll establish our perfect thickness. Then double check to make sure they're all squared up. And it's time to start milling down some wood to make some grout. At this point, we're going to prepare this stuff for two separate glue ups. One of them is going to be the strips that are going to go between our sapili pieces, and the other one's going to be a glue up of just the maple uh, getting ready to trim it down into ingrain pieces to be the grout. It's important to do it this way to make sure that all of your grout grain is in grain too. You don't want to be mixing grain directions with your grout. It, it would seem pretty easy to just go ahead and put pieces across sideways uh, through this whole board to uh, get the grout in there. But if you're mixing in grain and side grain, you run the risk of, of your board uh, coming apart on you. And we'll go ahead and get a straight edge to run across the fence of the table saw for this piece. And this piece here is going to break down into the pieces that are going to go between the sapili right now in this next glue up. So here at the Barbie Playhouse table saw we're going to cut these out to be about a quarter of an inch wider than the thickness of our sapili. 
Then we'll make sure they have one straight edge for the bandsaw to rip them down in half. And then we're cutting them in half at the bandsaw because we are going to go with a quarter inch wide grout for this board. And, and these, uh, these pieces are about an inch thick, so I'm going to cut them in half and then we'll plane them down to a quarter of an inch to make a perfect grout thickness for this board. And before they go through the plane, I'm going to run them through the jointer to make sure they have one perfectly flat side. Uh, the idea there is to make sure that it has a perfectly flat side to eliminate the chance of snipe on the ends. With how thin these strips are that we're going with, you want to try to eliminate every chance you can of it curling up into the blade because when we get down this thin, that blade will end up chipping it out really easily. So now it's time to start gluing this thing together. Um, you'll notice that I made the strips a little bit longer than the Sapili pieces. That way if I did end up with some snipe, it, it, it's, it's not a big deal because I can glue that end a little bit outside of the board and I'll still get a good perfect glue joint. And then this glue up is where we'll get the strips that go across the width of the board. And I made this glue up a couple inches longer than the width of the board for the same reason. That way whenever I, I get it milled down to a quarter of an inch, the uh, snipe can be trimmed off on the outside of the glue up. This is one of them spots where it'd be nice to have a drum sander because due to the grain direction, whenever the, the blade's going around there and chipping off the, uh, the wood that needs to be chipped off to get thinner, it starts clogging up in the dust collection and it looks like big strips of confetti. Almost like, uh, like some newspaper that went through a paper shredder that, that cuts it in long pieces. I get about two or three passes, then it clogs up and it's more of this again. Two or three passes, then it clogs up again. Now that we got the strips glued in there, we can finally plane this down to the exact one and a half inch thickness that we're shooting for here. You wanna make sure that you're taking an even amount off of both sides. That way where the, the grain joins together in the middle, don't look like it's favoring one side or the other whenever you finish your piece. Then we'll start cutting it up with the table saw sled. I'm shooting for an inch and a half thickness, so I'm going to go an inch and three quarters on all these pieces. A little tip here, this sled used to drag and hang up a lot when I used it for something like this. And I ended up buying some paste wax to put on top of the table saw. And when I was rubbing it on, it seemed like this has to be a joke. I started feeling like I was sold some snake oil or something. But let me tell you, it made a world of difference. It slides across there like ice now. Which is really impressive to me considering all the glue and the scrapes and stuff I have on that table. Now I chopped up the other board in an inch and three quarter strips and now I'm going to strip them in half on the bandsaw just like I did the strips before and then we're going to end up planing them down to a quarter of an inch just like the other strips. With the grain direction of these pieces, this here's another spot where it'd be nice to have a drum sander. But I don't have one. I have a planer and that's what I'm going to use. Um, so there is a risk of chip out as we get down thinner with these pieces. Unfortunately, we did get a few uh, small cases of snipe and a little bit of tear out. This one here is the bad one where it jumped up against the blade as it started exiting the one roller and took a good chunk out of it. Um, but if you remember correctly, we uh, we made these pieces a little bit long so that we can cut those, those uh, instances of snipe and tear out off of these pieces and it won't affect our finished product. 
All right, it is time for the final glue up. Now, before you get to this glue up, make sure everything's organized the way you need it to be organized for it to be perfect. It'd be a bad time to go ahead and slap that thing together and then find out you have a piece facing the wrong direction. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start gluing those strips in between our, our pieces and we'll start seeing our brick pattern layout right here. And I'm going to take my time here, make sure all of my grouts are lined up. I'm going to use a straight edge to make sure they're perfect, or sort of a straight edge, I guess. And, uh, yeah, get it all right. Yeah, this is the time where you want to make sure everything's perfect. Because if you have a little bit of a brick, it's slightly out of alignment. Somebody with OCD is going to pick that out from across the room and call you out on it in a hurry. So let's get it right right now. Now if you have troubles with the pieces slipping together as you go tightening your clamps and causing it to go out of alignment after you spent all that time trying to get it straight, what you can do is sprinkle some finer powdered sawdust in the glue or use some salt is what some people do. And that will uh, keep everything held together. And at this point it's a good idea to scrape your glue off of at least one side because when you lay that side down into your planing jig you're going to want it to be able to lay as flat as possible so there, there's little to no movement whenever you're planing your board. Then I'll cut off the extra excess before I go putting it in that jig um, but I'm not going to actually square up the board yet. I'm just going to get all the excess off and then I'll stick it in the jig. And now it is time for the planing jig. If uh, you've been around this channel for a bit, you've seen this jig before. If not, um, I have a build video for this jig. It's pretty simple. It's a good uh, supplement to uh, using a drum sander. Uh, that way you don't have to use your planer to surface these boards. You want to try not to use the planer to uh, get a flat surface on these boards because whenever you have ingrain feeding through those boards sometimes the 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 knives of the the planers will catch really hard and sometimes it'll explode the knives and and sometimes it'll explode the board and it'll cause havoc and problems and maybe even destroy your planer so this here is a much safer better way to go um, especially if you don't have a a drum sander available but yeah, I do have a build video for this available on the uh, the YouTube channel. So go back. It's a few months back. Uh, go ahead and check that out. It is a fairly easy jig to make, and it's no reason to feel daunted about making one. It uh, It's pretty simple. It, it takes some time, and it's fairly cheap and easy to make. And I'll we'll take the board over to the table saw and square it up. And as always, it is time to sand. Yeah, sanding. Just love sanding. But since we used a router to plane this thing down, it's going to have a little bit of like a lawnmower effect where as the blade spins, it's pushing the grain one way on one side of the bit and pushing the grain the other way on the other side of the bit as the bit's going around in circles. So you're going to have to go with a, a heavy uh, low grit sandpaper to start out to get all of that out. I started out with 40, worked up to 60, then 80, and then 120, and then went up to 220. Then before we use the 220 grit, I'm going to lightly wet down the entire board with a wet paper towel, a little bit of water. We don't want to go too heavy because we don't want to soak the board and have it take hours to dry. But a nice light coat of water that will dry up in about 15 minutes is enough to cause that grain to pop out. And when you come back after it dries, it will feel rougher to the, to the touch than what it did whenever you just got done sanding. Then what we'll go ahead and do is sand off all of that new prickliness that it has and then it'll never do that again because it is all sanded off at this point. Mm -hmm. 
then the most dreaded part is followed by my favorite part putting the finish on make sure you get all of the sawdust off the board before you do this it's helpful to run a vacuum or even uh, some compressed air over it to uh, make sure it's all blown out of the grain and stuff it'll really make a difference in how this stuff soaks up Well, that'll do it for this build. I'm really excited with how it turned out. And if you if you like it and you're excited about it too, hit that like button for me. And if you want to see more videos like this, go to my channel. There's more cutting boards there to try out for yourself. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more to come. Because there is more to come. But until next time, make something awesome.